Hello, I'm Monte Beatham, and thank you for tuning in to Once a Warrior. My guest came from Australia to play for the club, and he hasn't left since. Uh, he's practically a Kiwi. My man, Blake Ashford, how are you, man? Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, Mons. Uh, watching this show quite a lot, so it's good to, you know, uh, get on there, number 204. I've been saving you up, uh, number 204, because you, you, you can talk. Uh, but how was it, New Zealand? How did it become your home, and how is it still your home? Um, obviously, my wife's from here. Um, and um, coming over here, I just love the lifestyle, mate. I, the, it's not a carefree attitude. It's just a sort of relaxed attitude that suits me uh, in the everyday life. Now, that relaxed attitude in your new gig is going to be awesome. Tell the people what you're doing right now. I just recently started with New Zealand Rugby League, so I get to go around and sort of uh, teach rugby league or help people learn the game, uh, development officer for the Bay of Plenty. So, look, it's exciting. Um, I've been looking to give back and find a way for ages, actually, to get back into the game. Um, and I'm really excited for this opportunity. You get to go into schools teach kids at a young age, you know, how to have fun first, because that's the main thing, Monty. All right, I know you had a lot of fun in the jumper. Let's remind you, man. Fires the ball for Ashford. Ashford crashes over. Here goes Johnson running off him, and Ashford is in for the try. Blake Ashford back at an angle. Ashford runs to the defence. Numbers building for Blake Ashford. Here goes Ashford. All the way for Ashford, and Ashford breaks the line. Intercepted by Blake Ashford. Ashford is away, and they won't catch him. Blake, when you watch those highlights back, man, what come to mind? Um, just that I was blessed, I suppose, to, you know, you look at the players that I played with, I uh, had RTS play there. I had Bully Luke, you know, who was a Kiwi representative. Just these sort of plays. And then the one and only, like Simon Mannering. Um, in my opinion, one of the greatest, not only to don the Warriors jersey, but just to play in the NRL. You know, the people you get to meet is uh, what we love in this game. And um, yeah, just those players. Well, Aisha, I think the club were lucky too because you came with 124 games experience from the West Tigers and also the Sharks. But why and how the Warriors, man? Well, it's a funny story. I'd sort of given up on rugby league, um, went through some bad places at the the Sharks. Um, you know, we got the wooden spoon my first year. And long story short, it was just Andrew McFadden gave me a call. He sort of, you know, made it personal, um, rang me and said, this is how I want you to be known, remembered, um, sort of as this player. So if we can get any bit of that back over here at the Warriors, I'd be happy to have you. Uh, you don't have a position. You've got to work your backside off. But um, I'd love to have you over here. And it was just that personal touch that Cappy sort of, that, that phone call sort of set me in my ways. The, the way he would approach you as a player and just tell you straight, you know, a lot of people would beat around the bush with things, this is this, this is that, but Cappy will tell you straight up and down. It's black and white with Cap, and that's what I love. That's what I needed to hear. I was a bit overweight when I came, so, you know, he told me uh, what to do to get right, and, uh, you know, I, I did my best to get in um, into Cappy's eyes the fitness that I needed, but obviously it did help. My wife was uh, from New Zealand, but uh, look, I, I just wanted to give it another shot, and he, I can't rap Cappy enough, mate. Uh, I found my love for rugby league again in New Zealand, in that Warriors jersey, and I can't thank him enough for bringing me over here. Yeah, I love that. It's a great story and, and wonderful insight. Now, over the years, you would have played against the Warriors a few times, man. Uh, what did you remember uh, of playing against the Warriors? What did you like? What didn't you like? My second game of NRL, it's a vivid memory, coming over to New Zealand, and it was only the second time I'd been over here. Um, to play and it was raining it was cold it was miserable I lined up at number six and across from me was uh, the one and only Stacy Jones so straight away I was awestruck uh, just uh, you know just playing against one of the the legends in the Warriors jersey I remember vividly uh, my welcome to first grade moment in that game I had this certain trick play not really trick play but a play I always used to run when I was at six off the scrum I used to just do a go across field, a simple drop one, drop two, take it myself, go around, and used to work in the lower grades. Uh, did that at Mount Smart, and 
I think it might have been Louis Brown just picked me up and drove me back. So it was a sort of welcome to first grade kid. You're in New Zealand now, the rain's pouring and I was helpless that game. Let's talk yeah. about 2011. Krizan and Inu getting nice and high, mate. And uh, where were you when, when that happened and, and what was going through your mind? So I was on the other side, Monty, and um, look, what are we now, 12 years later? It's still yeah. a no-try in my book, mate. Uh, to be honest, you know, I never really played in too many final series, and those years I thought we would have won a comp or been in a grand final, so it uh, definitely hurt. It wasn't on my side, but, you know, instantly I was thinking, nah, that's a no-try. Then you got big Manu running over, tapping you on the head, saying, try time, we're going through, so... It still stings, Mons. Uh, as you know, a lot of losses do, and that one definitely did. When you come over and uh, there's a bit of hype around the signings, uh, you know, as we mentioned, is uh, Roger, Isaac Luke and, you, and yourself. Uh, what is the pressure like internally and externally uh, to be something, you know, to be someone that uh, the crowd want to see or anyone wants to play, play with? To be honest, come to New Zealand, it was pretty easy um, because in Australia, you're... You're one team in this small, small area. You go cafe with the boys, have some lunch, and the newspaper over there, the first six pages are all rugby league. You know, the pressure's on right there. Everyone walks past, knows who you are. You come to New Zealand, one team in the whole country, and obviously not an RTS or Isaac Luke, so wasn't so recognisable to start off with. And, um, you know, you, you sort of go under the radar and you don't feel that pressure. It's just the pressure you put on yourself and... You don't want to let your teammates down. Um, that, that's the only hard thing about it, uh, knowing some games where you could have done better. And it's hard because you don't, you'd never get those back. Aish, we always get excited on our debut matches, but you know when you're playing against your old team, um, it's even more exciting. Uh, you remember your debut and uh, the memories of that? It was against the Tigers. Yeah, it was. Campbelltown Stadium was about 40 degrees. I remember getting held up twice over the line. I actually had a bit with Shawnee that game because he used to hate my hair because, call me cheap mods, I don't like paying $25 for a haircut, <laughs> right? So I do the home jobs. I get the wife, just cut it up, shave it. And he said, if you don't score this weekend, you're going you're gonna to have to go get a haircut. And we made a deal, got held up twice over the line. And actually, I still own a haircut because I refuse to go pay 25 bucks still. But Shawnee was my gym partner when I first got there. Um, I was never one who could lift heavy weights, so I was always with the halves. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we had a good time, man. Uh, who were the guys there early on that, that helped you in terms of making you feel welcomed or just being that person that you wanted to play alongside? Oh, here's a story for you. Once the first day going in um, to training, and I had one of my home homemade uh, haircuts. And, you know, the joke, I go in and, uh, Sione Lousy's there and Bunty's sitting there and they're like, oh, oh, oh. never met them before. <laughs> oh, who got you, bro? Let's go get him. Let's go get him. Oh, hey, bro, Blake. <laughs> Far out. They walk into that in your first day and you just know straight away, I like this place. Um, definitely Benny Madalino uh, made me feel welcome in the club. I uh, played against him for a long time from the under-20s upwards. So it was always those players that you played against for a long time. Jacob Lilliman, obviously a fellow Aussie. Um, both our wives were from New Zealand, but, um, you know, it was sort of you lean on each other at some times when you're coming over to a new country. So I remember also Bodine Thompson, who just recently retired, mate. He's uh, a bloke who I got to play with at a couple of clubs, played schoolboy footy against him in Australia. And definitely when I came over here, he lived close to me. So I was definitely hanging out with him a lot. Uh, taught me the... The art of fishing, Mont. So uh, yeah. I definitely love that now. And, and I picked up a golf stick because of him. Still yet to beat him, but it's something I do enjoy now that I've retired. 2016, mate, you were a part of um, some great names that come to the club. Um, you mentioned before Isaac Luke, Roger Tui versus Sheik. Um, your memories of being on the ground with them early on? Just to play with Roger, you know, I'd, I'd been stepped by him so many times. So to not have that happen again, knowing he was on my team was awesome. You know, someone who I've got a lot of time for, um, we're still real close now. We see each other very often. Um, our wives are best friends. Um, on the field, mentioned being sat on a chair uh, from his step quite a few times. Getting to play alongside him, he was, he, he's a very intense character, but he always, always wants the best for you and for the team. 
if you're giving you 100 percent and doing everything roger will be there for you and um that's something that you know it used to get me nervous because am i doing the right thing am i upset you're never going to get to his standards but you're just trying to do your best to maintain with him but um it was a tough year because we had those signings and Roger obviously went down with his ACL injury, so we had to shuffle the team around. And But, mate, once again, you look back and it's a year lost, I think, with the players we had. I really think we should have been a semi-final team. And, I mean, this year, you'd know being in there, just Webby, it seems like, has brought this great belief in the players. You're going out there believing. And it's sort of what I thought Andrew McFadden did my first year. It was a shame that he didn't get to stay on because I do think... And, and look, this is all hypothetical here, but if he stayed on, I thought we could have been a chance. He's sort of the coach you need, a straightforward coach who does have belief in you, but tell you when you're going wrong. Uh, that, that year under Cappy, uh, games that you remember? Certain games I can remember. Uh, Central Coast Stadium, you know, we, we'd been on a bit of a slide and it was just a tough game. It went to Golden Point against the Roosters and I just remember we kept them in their 50 for them to kick and... Tui Lola here returned it, made a little break and found RTS. And what better way for Rog to come out, uh, score that try in Golden Point against his former team. So that was one that definitely lifted our spirits. And I think we went on a little bit of a run there for a while. The, the following year, I got really excited because uh, Foz came into the mix. You had Kieran Foran, SJ, you had um, Isaac Luke, um, you know, and, and, and also uh, Roger. I mean, that was the Kiwi spine. That was a... Damaging spine, and I thought it was game over. Uh, why was it not game over, Blake? <laughs> oh, we just, I don't know, mate. I think at the end of the day, we can all look at why we didn't perform. I know um, we tried some things as well with Mooks coming in his first year. We did this switcheroo that I think Mooks invented where I'd, I'd start to play uh, centre for defence and then attack on the wing. And it sort of didn't really work, and it... We tried it for a couple of games and it, it didn't seem to click and it just seemed forever that year we're just trying to find combinations and things yeah. that would work. And funny enough, you know, that how it goes the next year, we had a couple of more signings and it worked out right. The transition from Cappy to Mooks, uh, for you individually uh, or even at the team, uh, did you, was it a smooth one? Was there any struggles? What did you like? For, for me, it wasn't really smooth uh, just because I suppose... Cappy wanted me in the team. And it's not Mooks didn't want me in the team. I think he just had other players where he thought were better than me in that position, which is fair enough. Every coach mm. has their opinion. It's the same as when you're trying to debut. Um, every coach might have an opinion on someone they don't have on you. So that was tough for me um, to get my, my head around that first year. But once I did, you know, I, I never had a problem with Mooks. He's a, a hard trainer, um, which I sort of prided myself on. Um, working hard so I never had a problem with Mooks and the transition might have been a bit hard obviously different game plans trying to introduce uh, your own style so like I said that first year was sort of growing pains and it worked out because that next year they made the semis. Blake uh, being on the same side as David Fusitua he was a noted try scorer for the club could score a try and probably made your life a little bit easier too. Look I'd, I'd put him in a position but then we know You've still got 10 metres to run. And you see Dallin these days doing that. Fuss was doing that in 2017, those put-downs. So, look, if you give the ball to Fuss in any sort of position with half a chance, he's going to die from five out and he's going to make you look good. So, look, man, I, I give that all to Fuss. I still think that he had the potential to do a lot more in this game, in the NRL, than he, than he ever accomplished. Hopefully we can see him back. If that happens, great. If not, well, he's had his time. And look, I love playing out, uh, inside Dave Fusatua. You had the Tongan brothers outside you because before Fuss was uh, Tui Lula here um, and he could play mm. as well. Um, the relationship with him, what was he like? And did you have to think about different plays to get him into a position? Yeah, I did. Um, because obviously he's a, a lot more fleet-footed than Fuss. Fuss will run over you, Tui will step around you. So you'd have to give him a, a bit more room to score but if you gave him that little extra meter he's uh definitely gonna light the world on fire because those feet he could dance the the boots off that fullback so look i, I definitely as a center i'd step back have a bit more depth 
and uh, try and feed the ball earlier to Tui Lola here. As a centre, what was your, was your mindset or your goals uh, or, or your, you know, trying to put your winger into a certain position? Anything you can share with us there, brother? Uh, the game sort of changed a lot. Obviously, coming into the NRL, it was a lot easier because the defences weren't as fit, weren't as switched on. You could get the ball a lot earlier as a centre. So I always used to like to go one-on-one with the centre, square him up, skip out, and have the two-on-one sort of flick or draw and pass. Um, you know, as the game sort of changed, it was a lot harder for these things. You had to sort of get your depth, and you sort of become a back rower in a sense where there wasn't so much finesse in the centres. We're starting to see it switch back. Um, but, look, as a defender... I think you're an integral part of that edge. You can see everything unfolding first. Mm. So you've got to be the loudest on that edge, in my opinion. You need to help the half out a heck of a lot and uh, really bark some orders. We didn't see in 2018, man. Um, you know, you, you played a lot of cup. Uh, talk to me about that and, and maybe some of the learnings you picked up because we then saw you the year later. Yeah, so um, coming over to the Warriors... Oh, you're never 100% as soon as you play a game of rugby league. But I had a very bad back injury at the Sharks. Um, I was out for about eight weeks. Um, I had nerve damage down my leg all the way to my foot. And signing with the Warriors, it still wasn't 100%. And it sort of relapsed in 2018. Um, I had to get some needles, some steroids into my back, sort of to see if it worked, then I wouldn't have to have surgery. Um I'm thankful to this day that I haven't had to have the surgery. It was me and Nate Roach at the time who had to go through that. So finally coming back into Cup, I think it was halfway through the year. Um, look, my learnings from that and what I'd tell anyone who gets dropped, the coach is there for a reason. He's, he's put you down there because he obviously sees something you're not doing. If you've got a problem, go speak to the coach and see what you need to do to first get back in there. But drop your lip and not playing well isn't going to get you back in there you know, sulking around. So that was my view on it. If I didn't get picked from working my backside off, well, that's how it is. And the team was going good that year, mate. So um, it was very hard to get in that team. Yeah, brother, you sound like the perfect team man. Um, and being the team man as well as being good on the field is huge because we always uh, see when there was trial scored, you'd be the first one there and you'd be getting your teammates up. You seem to be that, that energy and that, that, that yardstick around the place uh, to, to push the, the tone. Well, I'm a big cuddler, Mons. Uh, so, you know, I used to I used to get real angry when someone would score and they wouldn't give me a cuddle. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm just big on that. I'm big on that. I just love celebrating. I'm also a pointer. So, you know, very rarely do I or did I do a lot individually. So I was always a big pointing back at them, letting everyone know who, who set me up. So that was the point. And then there was always had to be a cuddle with it. I would have loved to, to be around people like you because it's never about you. It's always about your teammates and that seems to be you. Always uh, that selfless attitude, bro. You know, you get picked on one person's opinion or a couple of people's opinion, you know. I was never the best in my age coming up. I never made any rep teams. You know, you hear this story, it's so cliche, but I never really did until I made the Junior Kangaroos. That was the first rep team I made. So um, just working your backside off and always being there. You know, you hear you want to be the player that players want to play with. And that's something I, I sort of live by. It, a lot of it is cliche, Mons, but um, I, I just loved it. Always being happy. And that excitement over here in New Zealand is something that sort of got me back into the game. I stopped watching it for a while, but coming over here, I loved it. And now I watch every game of footy. Just love it. You got back from a tough year, a trying year. Um... Did you have more appreciation for it? Um, did you think it was over previously? Uh, I did. So I'd, I'd, I'd come back from the the back injury and then sort of had a patella tendon injury where I had surgery on it. Um, and coming into the next year, I sat down with, with Mooks and he just said, look, the centre position, we've got about three or four centres there that are maybe in your way, but we don't have a back rower, uh, like a, a big depth in the back row. So obviously, I was never the fastest, but I was fast enough to play centre. But the, as the age got there, crept up 31 at the time, it, um, you know, I sort of slowly transitioned into the back row. And I sort of had one last push. I, I knew I was 
near the end, and I thought if I could do everything right just to get myself fit um, and do my best to play back row this year, I'll do that. And uh, I got a bench spot in the first game of the season, 2019. Memories of that last game, did you know it was your last game? And how did you build up into, in, into that week if, if you did? I said I was going to retire to my agent for probably, you know, with about 10 rounds to go. So that patella tendon injury crept back up and it had gone, must be contagious because it went to my other knee as well. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I'd, I'd played New South Wales Cup uh, the week before the last round and I thought it was my, my last game. Um, I went over there, had Sam Lasani come down, present me with a shoey, which I wasn't too overly pleased with after the game. Couldn't uh, handle that. But then Petahiku got injured, so I got called up for the the last round. And for those last six or maybe 10 weeks, I'd I'd been in and out of first grade, but Mooks finally had to pull me because my knees were that bad. I couldn't train all week. I'd I'd do the captain's run and just and just play and wow. get through it. I'd have that many anti inflams and things to get me up a day before the game and just to get up for the game. And then once the 80 minutes was over, I was on a big down again. So that last game coming into it, I knew it was the last to ride. We're going over to play a Raiders team that ended up making the grand final that year, I believe. And we put in a good performance. We had Tane Mill on the wing, myself there, a new sort of edge. We scored a great try, one of the, the tries they still show this day. I think we went through about 15 hands, finish off by the one and only RTS. But um, the comeback win to finish it off in Canberra, a place I hadn't had much success in. Um, and the 50th game as well for the Warriors. You know, got the the name a bit bigger on the on the dressing shed wall. So I just, I loved it. Uh, I had a joke that I got the 50th, the last game, and couldn't have gone out in a better way, Mons. How do you look back on the whole experience and, and sum it up? Coming over and playing against them first, daunting, and then you get to play amongst it and see just the characters you have in this Warriors jersey and just that crowd so electric. And then to feel the difference when I ran out with, you know, 20 plus thousand on my side, the drums beating, the lights are off, the flames are going, still gives me a bit of goosebumps now. I was just talking about how exciting it was to run out, especially in a winning Warriors jersey. You know, just the name of the show, Once a Warrior. Got to come back to the Old Boys Day last year and just to see the turnout for that, mate. I've never experienced an Old Boys Day before, so it was my first and um, definitely didn't disappoint. It was great, you know, and number one to myself, number 204, you can have a beer or have a feed and talk to anyone. It definitely is a, a true family club and uh, looking back now, I'm glad I made the move. Now, look, I, I can't bring myself to cheer for the All Blacks or the uh, Kiwis. Um, but uh, if they're playing against someone other than Australia, I'm on their side. <laughs> I love it, brother. Blake, uh, once a warrior, always a warrior, mate. You're a 50-game milestone warrior, man. Thank you for your service, brother. Thanks, East Mons. It's been an uh, honour reliving some of the, the nice memories in the Warriors jerseys. I'm once be them. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next week for another episode of Once a Warrior. Is over. Here goes Johnson running off him and Aceford is in for the try. Blake Aceford back at an angle. Aceford runs to the defence. Numbers building for Blake Aceford. Aceford. Here goes Aceford. All the way for Aceford and Aceford breaks the line. Intercepted by Blake Aceford. Aceford is away. And they won't catch him.